and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, a subsidiary of the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have two of my good two of my good brothers here in the temple. We have the ma the man who is taking who is taking over your anime, one one pair of sunglasses at a time, good brother Shades, and we have the man of a thousand runes, the CEO of Zadara Enterprises, and the man who's probably enga who's probably engaging in a in a corporate tug of war with three. With two, with two, uh, with two other CEOs who are who are who are either meme lords or are whipping boys, and the bane of my fucking existence, good brother Xanatrix. How are we doing tonight, dude? Are you gonna make that intro any longer for him than it already is? Jesus Christ! I um, can already say that we have our VTuber division up and running, and we're already outperforming both Guy and Dan Kuroto at ten thousand percent. <laughs> <laughs> They can't catch up at this point. We've got the initiative. But e but even w even w even with all of that, um, this was this this week was not ex was not exactly the original plan. But after la after last week, when we when we wrapped up and we got off the air, we ended up spending se uh, a few dozen minutes. Um, disc discussing the topic matter for tonight, and I decided, you know what? Fuck it. I'm calling an audible, and I'm making that the topic. And uh, and I thought I thought, and thus the rest is history. In fact, as as fact, when I announced that, within minutes, Shades had the splash screen all ready to go. <laughs> well, I mean, I already had most of the images I needed, considering what I do. Yeah, I mean, it was easy to just slap that together in five seconds. But considering considering that th that this week's topic is the rise of VTubing and the art of authenticity, and considering that you've been running a series for for a while, for a little while now called a VTuber's Guide to VTubers, I will let mm. you set the stage on on this one, Shades. Well, thank you, my good friend. Yes, uh, though I will admit I've been kind of taking a break on that series because unfortunately. Uh, I've been falling behind on a lot of my scripts, and I just haven't had the ability, especially this week, because I got freaking allergy attack that hit me hard. But regardless, VTubers. So I think most people watching this show tonight or watching this video probably have at least heard the term or know what a VTuber is. But for those un few uneducated out there, VTuber, of course, standing for virtual YouTubers, or you could call them v, uh, v Livers. That's another name they go by, except some of them go on Twitch. But basically, the idea is simply that instead of using a webcam to show your show yourself on a stream, you use a virtual avatar in its place. And technology has evolved to the point where you can just use your uh, webcam, or most professionals tend to use an I, uh, modern iPhones to do the face tracking. And the idea is basically you create a new persona, a new character that you interact with your chat with. Uh, now, this, the, the, uh, there's been a lot of debate. There's been some discussions as to where the origins of this go. Some, in terms of actual VTubering, you can go back as far as Supersonico and Ami Yamato. Uh, some can even trace back to the Vocaloid craze in terms of how creating virtual uh, virtual recreations of stuff became a thing. But most will say, the, the, no one will argue, or very few will argue, that the first fully like self-proclaimed virtual YouTuber was Keys in an Eye. Mm -hmm. Back in, I believe it was 2017 when she blew up. Yeah. That absolutely insane woman, yes. Yes, Keys in an Eye completely came onto the scene in 2017 and blew the ever loving fuck up getting like 2 million subscribers within months which was insane mm -hmm. and ever since then the but the art of VTubing has even just in those few years has evolved whereas Keys and I was more video centric making pre-produced content today's VTubers with the help of groups like Hollow Live, Niji Sanji, and of course a lot of the independents out there have begun focusing more on the live aspect, being able to do it live on a live video feed, being able to talk with their chat directly. And that has since led to a, a massive explosion. Now, some of this, and I stress some, not all, 
was also helped by the pandemic that happened this last year because with everyone stuck at home, obviously they needed shit to do and VTubers just happened to be at the right place at the right time. But that is not the only reason for the success and I will never say anything, I will never say otherwise because they were already starting to gain a lot of momentum in 2019 uh, during the blow, during the early rise of Hololive. Mm -hmm. Hololive is probably the one you've heard mostly these days because they have been going crazy with several of their members crossing the Millen submark. One even getting past two. Yeah, and, and it's been insane. And I'd say I'd say that Hololive is the, is the first example of of a of a label with set with several VTubers un, under its um, umbrella. Yeah, that would be a good... Well, I mean, you can probably trace back to other ones, but they were the first big one because, uh, yeah, he's and I, even though they do have a company behind them, did, was mostly focused on I, whereas Hololive started out, and, and the creator, Yoshika Kitanigo, a.k.a. Yagu, specifically stated that he wanted to make a virtual AKB48. Which... That was his intent from the get-go. Which, um, if if that if that's the case, um, I'd say I'd say it I'd say it ended up out I'd say it ended up doing that with while avoiding the pitfalls of of those mega groups like AKB48, because I have um I am no I am no I am no stranger to to those sorts of idol groups and I've had um opinions about idol culture idol culture as a whole. And one of the one of the bi one of the big problems with with a lot of those groups is, for one, they are fucking massive, to the point where there are several <laughs> blocks, and the and the and I think the cl the closest thing that the closest thing that we've ha that we've had to a couple um a couple people who've who who were able to kind of br kind of break out of kind of break out of the out of the massive cloud of people that's in these groups. There's and I, I'm not saying that they're the only success story, but it's the one that's going to come to mind. And because because it's us, I have to bring it up, and that's Queen and Elizabeth. And even then, it was only because of their appearance. They they were in AKB48 when that particular show came out, mm -hmm. and you really, they haven't exactly gone too big on their own since. But I think the bigger aspect of it, and I think one of the issues with the with idol groups in general, and kind of leading into what our topic is tonight is that with idol groups, they have to put on a very specific face for their audience. Mm -hmm. They're very manufactured. They're not a, very manufactured. They have to they can't even have they can't even be can even hint at having a boyfriend. Because the backlash from something like that would be unbearable. You have you have to be seen as available for the people who idolize you. Yeah. And I, Which I is believe unhealthy as shit. I believe the, um, I believe if some if somebody wants the perfect, co if somebody wants the perfect um, commentary or condemnation, whichever you want to put, whatever you want to put it on, on the on the on the on the whole on the whole idol phenomenon, there's two there's two en there's two entries that that spr that spring to mind, even though one of them is a stretch. Um, Let's go with the obvious one first. Perfect blue. Mm. Oh God! Um, an ama a amazing, a amazing film, and and one that and one that I always that I always have to ca I always have to caution people around because it gets intense. That's a Toshi That's call. A that man, uh, that man had some eccentric ideas to say the least. Yeah, that um. gets intense. <laughs> That's the understatement of the day. Oh. Yeah, I watched that kit movie as a teen, and uh, yeah, <laughs> still got some scars from that one. Mm -hmm. oh. At least you weren't as, at least you weren't as dumb enough as as I was wa watching <laughs> watching Watership Down when you're ten years old. Oh, it's you 1995 when you're twelve with all of your friends. I still have you beat. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm not I'm not topping that. <laughs> Uh, the other one, the other one, and the film version of, of no less, not the TV version. The the other the other one that I that I could that I could bring up, and unf unfortunately, unfortunately, I can only bring up part of it, and only as an honorable mention. And I'm putting all these caveats for a reason, and that is, um, Common Rider the next, 
which <laughs> I don't hate. Mm. I don't hate Common Rider the Next for the record, but I do think it's I do think it's trying to do too much at once. Yeah, even our even our resident Toku expert Easy Rider is kind of iffy uh, fifty fifty on that movie. Like he, there's some parts he likes, but that whole J horror subplot can get weird. Um, if they want, if they if they wanted to do, if they wanted to do that, fine. Because there's always been an element of horror in in um, Ishinomori's work. Mm. If you if you look at really early, ep- if you look at the first dozen episodes of the original Kamen Rider, you'd see it. If you if you look if you look at plenty of it, plenty of his manga, it's there's there's little hints of it there. Um, yeah, but it's but it's the fact that it tried to do. The J horror, the J horror thing invo- involving a, involving a cur- involving a involving a dead idol and a, and a corrupt um a corrupt talent agency, and do, and do the sto- and do the st- and do the story of V3's appearance and face turn, and and do and do Nigo and do Nigo's um the the fact that Nigo is slowly di- slowly dying because of the because of the fact that he. That his modification was imperfect, and doing the whole thing of of Hongo becoming a teacher in a in a school full of delinquents, like it's too. There's you're spinning plates. Yeah. And they, and yeah, spun that's too many. But the, the the point we're getting at here is that yeah, those are the examples of how the idol industry as a whole can be a just mess to try to deal with because of how manufactured and how tightly controlled these idol groups are like one girl in AKB 48 one time was caught with her boyfriend and she was forced to shave her head and put out an apology video for the damage she caused to her fans like this was what the punishment was for just having a personal life and when that's it's no it's no surprise th- then that you ha- that you have stories of pe- of of people um of people snapping because for because um for one if you if you want to see a more local um example example of the example of this kind of effect and what and how it and what it can do to the psyche look at um Look at look at kids who who grew up in a, who grew up in a very re, very religious household, a ver, very very um, a, ver, a Hell, very I'll give you I'll give you evangelical household. I'll give you a fair. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt there, but I got a very specific example because it recently blew up. Look at Britney Spears. Look what happened with her. Like we as we look back now and realize what the hell that she went through during her career. A lot of that is prevalent in in pop culture and in pop in pop music culture in general. And the idol industry is that cranked to eleven. Mm-hmm. But the reason the reason why I'm bringing all this up when it comes to when it comes to idols is is that is the show show the irony in 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 Hollow Life being the VTuber AKB48 because. It, because it ends, it ends up avoiding so many of the pitfalls that happened with, that happened with those massive idol groups. There's a level of freedom that even VTuber groups like Hollow Live, Niji Sanji, and them have. I mean, sure, there are rules they have to follow. They're, they they have things that there 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 are lines they cannot cross. But outside of that, they're a lot more lenient about what their talent can do. I mean, the fact that one of the most well-known, one of the more well-known clips in the Hollow Live community is the cute and adorable Sakura Miko saying the N word during a GTA stream. <laughs> Should give you an idea it, of what they can get away with in this let, shit. Let's be fair. There, she was imitating Lamar during the iconic scene. Literally, everybody knows about as part of a meme this time, and most Japanese people do not know what that word means to Americans. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. I agree. But the fact that that you that that even after the fact that they had the videos, you know, the videos never got taken down. That you know, people are still allowed to talk about it, and they still sometimes do it even today. Like even now that they know what that word means, they still sometimes do it. Like that's still a thing. And again, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just one moment. 
But you look at all of the some of the more well known clips of the Hololive girls and any of their VTubers for that matter, and you will find countless clips of a very similar nature where they say stuff that if you were an actual Japanese idol, you'd never get away with it. <laughs> Korone with her constant "What the fuck?" or uh, "Yeah, let's just let's just consider the fact that Miko started her whole elite English thing." Um. And then, of course, we have Coco, who is bilingual and says motherfucker constantly. Yeah, and that's and she's one of my personal favorites, to be frank. <laughs> her, her and her and uh, her and uh, do I call her Hato or Hachama? I miss Hato. I, Regardless, I both of both yeah. of them are, are like the uh, the two bilingual English Japanese speaking Hololife members. But then, you know, you have a bunch of people who are trying to learn english and then just kind of stop when they learn things that work for them hi marine hi i'm horny i, <laughs> I was just about to make her <laughs> or but oh, then so you marine. Oh, god to to be fair my full dive into vtubing was my birthday in 2018 just a few days after a little known meme queen, the cat, no, not cat, alien, no, not, not alien, fox girl, Shirakami Fubuki. Ah, yes. The, 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 the meme queen, the meme queen of, of Hololive, um, Ohakon to all of you over there in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she was my, my big introduction to VTubing. And then, through her, I got to meet, you know, Hato, Suise, a bunch of, of the first gen and indies. And then second gen and gamers came out, and Fubuki was wrapped into gamers, and I got introduced to God Dog and Lazy Cat and Scaredy Wolf. <laughs> I have pet names for them all. They are all my daughters, and if anybody hurts them, I will murder them all. <laughs> oh, rest assured, I will not be laying a hand on them because they are too cute. I, we will protect the cinnamon buns. People, people have asked me, "Do you want them to be waifus?" I'm like, "Well, first of all, listen to Fubuki, not waifu friendo. Second of all, <laughs> no. This is this is pure father energy for his daughters. You touch them, I'm taking your arms and beating you to death with them." <laughs> um. And that, and that, and that's how we, and that's how we, and, and then, and then the leftover parts were taken to a blacksmith, and that's how we got the sword known as Spinal Tap. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, we still need to give Doku his sword. <laughs> um, but, and he, even, even, um, even a couple people, even a couple people that that we know have, um, t have. Have t have taken the have taken the um v have taken the VTuber route. Um, chief among them is somebody I've known for a while, and that's um, Martyr, who's t who's t who's taken that route and now and now gone and now gone full on fox ears. Um, and there and there's also there's also the f but there's also the fact that within I'd I'd say. What I'd say one of the things that's really helped that really helped spiral, um, the Western expansion of the of the whole VTuber thing, is the is um, for lack of a better word, meme culture. Because <laughs> oh yes, oh, oh yes. Because what I, th because my first introduction to a lot, my first introduction, was um was was Corone and I have I have my brother Homer to thank for for put for putting that in for putting that in my face so many times until I finally took the plunge. I didn't have to get uh, pressured by you shades. Homer beat me to it by a year. <laughs> There's Ah uh, yes. Yubi Yubi <laughs> Yubi Yubi Chodai. But <laughs> give me your fingers. The but um the the main the main in the main insp the main intro of co of course especially especially given some of the games I spend way too much time on was uh, was Corone playing Doom yeah <laughs> yeah yeah because I cover I've covered this in my video but I'm gonna bring it up here for those who don't know Inugami Corone 
was doing it did a run of Dune 2016 that was so popular, it themselves took notice of this and even slipped in a little Easter egg into a patch for Doom Eternal called Doog Eternal. <laughs> If you pulled the trick, it, it was if you pulled, I believe, right trigger three times on any of the data log pages, a uh, doom. I, I think it was specifically for the chainsaw. Yeah, y you would, you would, uh, you would hear the chainsaw revving, and a doom logo that said "Doog" instead would pop up on screen. It has since been patched out, which is kind of sad. Yes, but it was there. Mm -hmm. um, they also sent her a plushy caco demon because it's her favorite. Yeah. Plus the um the Kako Demon has has the Kako, the Kako Demon has been a has been a meme in in Doom circles for the for the longest time. Um and uh, and and hell I've had, I um I ended up get I ended up getting a custom made cake once that was that was well a well a Kako Demon. It was a, a Kako, Kako Demon. Yes. Yeah, Kako Demon. Um but I... it was, but it wasn't actually her playthrough of Doom 2016 that was that was originally brought to my attention. It was, in it was in fact her playthrough of the of what some people call the real Doom 3, and that's Doom 64. <laughs> I remember watching her play that. <laughs> oh, that, Corone. That and her, that and her losing her mind reg regarding certain things that don't make sense in the original Mario Brothers, which gate which. Gave, which gave us the legendary meme of "Have confidence." No confidence. Dies. No confidence. <laughs> that was, yeah, she did it. She one of her more famous English only runs because she's been trying to push herself to learn English to look to 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 communicate with her Western audience more and more. It is her Super Mario Brothers stuff, yeah. such as uh, Turtle House. Um, she just tries to come up with words to say that aren't in Japanese because the challenge is, as soon as she speaks a Japanese word, the stream ends. <laughs> she's done it on accident before, and she's like, "Oh, bye, guys," and just ends it. It's funny. Yeah. Um, I think one. I think one of my favorite ones that somebody animated was was her was her was her trying to figure out how the, how the hell you can throw fireballs underwater. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where, and to then a, the point where somebody animated it with her, with her in a, um, a, a um, a a white a um, sci a scientist robe look, looking at a chemistry kit. Yep. <laughs> and and then of course we can't we can't talk about Corone like the last thing we got to bring with Corone of course. Ikabukum, ikabukum. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Some, somebody somebody messed with that so in, instead of instead of Ika Bokum, it was do, it was doing the entire who's on first sketch oh god I, <laughs> I, rem I remember that one too but I think a, a, another part of meme culture as I as I mentioned earlier Fubuki is called the meme queen quite mm. quite, uh, quite often and it's not just mm. because of the Japanese memes she pulls off like when marine and oh who was it, it was Noel. I think no, Xion. Marine and Xion were supposed to be streaming, and they forgot to get up in time to be streaming because they were. Oh, doing... I remember this. And it was Fubuki commenting on their stream not being up yet for four hours. <laughs> not she... not even a joke, folks. This actually happened. She streamed their stream. She had her, their stream open on her stream, saying that it was waiting for them to show up, and she was talking about how long it was going to take them. And uh, Xion and and Marine had both set up alarms and turned them off when they went off instead of getting up. <laughs> they, they had done, you know, an offline hangout and then they forgot to get up and start streaming uh, for four hours. <laughs> and yeah. it, it's just, her doing these <laughs> sorts of things have always been memes. She memes on the fact that Miko constantly tells her that the only way to be a gambler is to go all in. And then she loses all her chips in whatever virtual game she's playing. She's like, well, Miko will have to give me a loan. Uh, but then mm. when it came to engaging with Western audiences, I think the earliest memes I started seeing uh, clipped and sent to Western audiences more and more often through the recommendeds on YouTube were Fubuki's shorts, where she did things like 
I'm Scatman, except she said I'm Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. Um, and things of that nature. Which then got to, uh, wrapped into actual Western YouTubers or Western streamers. Specifically, the one I saw spread around most often was when 8-Bit Drummer was covering her stuff. Oh, um, yeah, the 8-Bit Drummer. He, he is... He got roped into it hard. Oh yeah, he's fallen down the rabbit hole a long time ago. But then the one that 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 uh came out of left field for everybody but me, or at least came out of left field for everybody but somebody who watches Jules's other channel, Jules Conroy, instead of just Family Jules, was the fact that uh Jules simps for Corone hard <laughs> to the point to the point that Hollow I've actually contacted him to cover her background music. Actually, it was Corone's idea. She asked them to make a contract when he asked her if he could make a metal cover of the uh, the uh, Inumor Corone Reiser movie uh, uh, music, which yeah, was which, by th- which already was all, was always an amazing background theme because it was from the same composer who did Act Razor. Yep, the, the fil- it was based off the Fillmore theme from Act Razor, thus the name. Yeah, uh, and and as you can see from this demonstration of just a few hollow live VTubers alone, everything snowballs yep. once yeah. the Western audience gets a hold of any small thing. Everything. It not it does not take much to fall down this rabbit hole, and once you fall down, you're not getting back out. As I was uh, commenting earlier before we started the show, I watched. For the fuck of it, because it came across my recommended, a height comparison between the heights of every Hollow Live girl. And I could name everyone before their name came up on the screen, and I was like, no, not like this. <laughs> it was the Matrix now, memes all over again, guys. It really was. Now, to bring this back around to the whole idea, the whole topic that we're talking about, because, yeah, we could sit here and gush about VTubers for hours on it. We really could. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we, I think what Monk is and I really want to do with this, and I'm sure Xana, you're right on with us on this. Yep. Is we want to really dive deep into why this happened. Like, what is it about VTubers specifically that has caused it to blow up to this level? What are they doing? What is the formula that they have uncovered to make them such a success? And the biggest aspect of this, in all honesty, is despite the fact that they are playing characters, that they are not entirely being 100% themselves, they're doing enough to be authentic. Mm -hmm. There's a level of engagement that even other streamers don't seem to be able to do that these VTubers can just naturally pull off. And I do want want to set the stage as far as what what made this click for me some some time ago and was only reinforced with... um, with recent discussions, and so because of this, it's time. It's time for me to. It's time for me to to address one of the bi- one of the bigger quote unquote elephants in the room, and br- and bring up, um, the, and bring up the 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 mo- the mo- the most en- the most NSFW end end of the end of this end of this particular spectrum with Project Melody. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> uh Melody. I remember when I was part of the science team before it was called the science team. <laughs> now <sighs> you hipster. Hey, just because I was on unnamed website here watching unnamed stream here the day that she first premiered is not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> But an, We're always enough, looking for new talent here in Zadari Enterprises. Shut up. But 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 enough about what Nux would call Schmentai. <laughs> um, I I remember I remember when there when there was that whole there was that whole announcement that she made that she that she was going to be be doing it be doing a stream on on a site that's u- that's usually reserved for cam girls and. I um, she outdid all of the cam girls at once. Out, not only that, she broke the damn site. 
<laughs> uh huh. Like I said, I was there for the first day she premiered on unnamed website here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> on on the on the. T- I was gonna make a Washington football team joke, but nah. Moments. Back. <laughs> <laughs> but and after after that, I saw I had. From from my sources and also from my own research, because somehow I've wrote myself into becoming a journalist. Don't know when that happened. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, but I saw tweet after tweet of of cam girls getting ridiculously salty. And um, I um, uh, as some of as some of you know, I ha- I have pe- I have people in adult entertainment that I consider friends, and. Something that I and en- something that I ended up learning is that cam girls are not e- are not exactly seen in high regard. Shall shall I say? This uh, is why they got tax. They got a they got a bunch of um, let's say four chan enthusiasts yeah. reporting to the IRS all the time a few years back. Oh yeah, the thought audit. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um. The th- and the, and a, lo- a lot of them got got ridicu- got ridiculously sal- ridiculously salty over that, and I'd I'd venture that I'd venture that a lot of them um, th- thought that looked at the t- the tips or the like that they that they'd be getting off of off of something like Chatterbait as as some sort of tax exempt because I'm pretty sure a lot of them have n- have um have never ha- have never had to file their own taxes beyond the automated stuff that everybody does on on stuff like turtle tax or the like mm-hmm. right um but just just the just the amount of saltiness and the amount of in the amount of entitlement from a, from a lot from a lot of them and that's that's really when that's really when everything clicked for me because i was i was sent a, i was sent a clip from it was it was from a group it was from a group thing I think it I think it may have been over VR chat or or something else I can't recall, but in it Melody had Melody had discussed that Melody had discussed that even though she was get even though that she was dipping into game streaming she was going she was going to be flat out admit that she, that she completely sucks at games, um <laughs> but she but she wanted she wanted to give it, she wanted to give it her best shot anyways, and. Like I said, that's when that's when everything went that's when everything went um went full went full circle for me. Because I contrast I contrasted that approach with somebody knowing with somebody going, "Hey, th- hey, I'm not hey, th- this is this is certainly outside my area, but I'm going to give it a shot. So ho- so hopefully you'll enjoy it, enjoy it and being open about that versus pe- versus people who had who um demanded or or expected they're a partic- a particular elite a particular allegiance sim- simply be- simply because th- simply because of control of the market or wh- or whatever other word you want to you want to put in my favorite mm-hmm. example of what you're describing right now monk there was that shitty ass twitch streamer who's like you watch me for free all day you can't just pay five dollars a month ah uh, yeah i was thinking the and same and they person. have they have made People have actively made a meme video comparing her to Corone. And for any of you who w- might want to get the most distilled version of what Monk is trying to bring up, what I have tried to bring up, what Shades has tried to bring up, go look that up. Streamer versus, uh, Go look up Streamer versus Corone. You can probably find it in the first 10 searches and watch it. And yes, it's a meme. Sometimes they post things like when Corone hits her chat with a hammer. But it's all in good fun with her. She doesn't demand that you pay attention. She doesn't demand that you give her things. She just does, and she loves it. That's that's the key. And then then so then several months ago, famed shit, famed sports shit poster and 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 what and, and um. And for and former game personality Urinating Tree posted a follow up video to his old ESPN and Association of Low Cows videos, which I share, which I shared with I shared on the council because this 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 kind of helped tie it all together for me. 
And this is the reason why I went with the title that I did, the art, putting in the subtitle, The Art of Authenticity. Because he did, a, he did a video called Revisiting ESPN. And in that, he, ta he, he specifically juxtaposed how, e how ESPN, ha ESPN has been getting their asses kicked when it comes to, view when it comes to bleeding viewership for a, even, even, even during the pandemic, which you'd, th you'd, think, they'd, you'd think they'd have an advantage since, since you'd be able to get more eyes on you, but they haven't. And he juxtaposed this with the with the rise of um po with the rise of of podcasting blowing up to the point where guys like Colin Cowherd are starting up their own podcast network. And that and that's where th that's where things that's where it kind of went full circle with this whole um approach of authenticity, even though VTubers are very clearly playing a character in one form or another. Somet sometimes it's just the, sometimes it's just themselves in an outfit. Sometimes they're go they're going all in on a, on a particular character, like say, um, Calliope. How chum? No, no, Callie, Callie will get to. I have a story about that. No, oh. Hachama is the one who goes full in on a character right now. Oh yeah, Hachama and her the... fucking psychological horror story <laughs> traumatizes is... me. Give me back Hato, that... please. Yeah, that, that to the point that it's it's she's at the point where I think I think things are like, getting really serious. Like, because have you seen the recent news with that? Yeah, she Holy finally crap. brought all the hidden the hidden videos back out because apparently she's going to be allowed to finish that storyline after all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I but give but given that but given given that given that now I've talked to, I've talked about what I took what I took out of that whole revisiting ESPN. But s since you had since you had seen that video, shades, I'm curious what your takeaway was in this in this whole conversation about authenticity. The thing of it is is that one of the biggest things I, I saw watching that video and, and knowing what I know about the VTuber community is there is there's a level of, of direct engagement that I think that to be fair, ESPN kind of has a hard time with that to begin with because of mm -hmm. course they're a national TV program. So they're already at a disadvantage there. Mm -hmm. But the, because of that they have to rely on talking points and and you know preset stuff preset scripting in a sense to kind of feed into that they can only talk about what they have at their hands they don't have that kind of direct line to their audience to talk with them whereas podcasters and by extension vtubers you know most of the time they're live watching their chat as their chat is talking so even if the chat is going a million miles an hour, which if you watch any Hololive girl, they usually are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, Got to get those super chats in there to get them to to uh, to notice you. Yeah, even then, even then, with even without that, they do try to keep an eye on their chat and will occasionally comment on stuff the chat is saying. Like if the chat is bringing up certain something during a game they're playing, they'll comment on it. Mm -hmm. There's that direct line of engagement. That makes that allows you to be drawn into their world. You get to, you know, the fact that they're mostly cute anime girls only adds to this because let's be honest, we're a bunch of fucking weeps. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Spade I here. am subbed to Oga. You take that back. <laughs> Oga's my man. Fuck off. <laughs> um, although, and some sometimes you have cases where where the, where there's a bit where um where. Th much, much in the much in the same way, certain certain comedians will and cer and certain acts like um like to like Tony and Tina's wedding will get the audience involved will get the audience involved. And I know I'm going with the most obvious one, but I'm not sh I'm not sure I'm not sure if Triple Espresso is is done anywhere else anywhere outside of the Midwest. Um, <laughs> but but you'll have but you have instances where the where the audience will get will get will get involved directly or indirectly a case of di the direct is stuff like oh guargura getting roasted by her own chat <laughs> that happens to half of the hollow live girls don't 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 get me wrong um we've we've seen Korone get roasted by her own chat we've seen fubuki get roasted by her own chat constantly yeah. Man, Fubuki is the butt of half the jokes in her in her chat, and she doesn't care. She laughs. She la mm -hmm. that that's the thing, though. 
uh, yeah, there's the other part of it though, is that they they understand what world the, these girls understand what world they've entered into. They know they are dealing with the internet. The internet is going to shit post. It is what we do. <laughs> and instead of getting mad about it, instead of trying to fight it, they have played into it and made it part of what they do. The mm-hmm. best example, once again, is my gal Kitty Coco, who does a weekly stream every Saturday where she goes on the Hololife subreddit and just talks about the memes that are being posted there. And she sometimes pulls guest members from the rest of Hololive to look at memes of themselves. Mm-hmm. And guaranteed, at least at some point, she's going to get one of those girls to say motherfucker. <laughs> my f- m- no, I remember. I, I think my favorite part was most recently when she finally taught Okayu to say I'm horny. I was just like, you could you could hear in the background, in the background, it's almost like a million Coronis cried out in deliverance and then bonked every chat everywhere. <laughs> but like, it, that's the thing that that there's another form of that direct engagement. They don't they don't ignore the work their fans do. They don't even, you know, obviously sharing fan art, everyone does that. But to share the memes and to comment on them and to laugh along with them, that gives the fans that feeling of we matter to these girls. Even if they understand it is just a character, that this is just, this is a streamer, this is not somebody, like a lot of, the, the community understands what this is. But for that brief moment, when their meme or their fan art or their chat gets commented on, for that brief second, that feeling of connection is so powerful that it keeps that loyalty without the need to enforce it. They don't have to ask fans to stick around. The fans are going to do that themselves Mm -hmm. just by them doing what they do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, with, with that note, I have a couple of points to make and probably the most poignant example of how much the audience means to any VTuber. And so my first point is VTubing, while in the case of a lot of the people we've been talking about, has been consolidated corporations, at the, at the very least, smaller groups, but groups nonetheless. But VTubing is not a closed hobby. VTubers, and there are plenty of independent VTubers out there, hi, can hi, all... Ad- <laughs> yes, Shades, go ahead and plug yourself for a second, why don't you? <laughs> uh, indie VTubers, so long as they create content, that content doesn't even have to necessarily be the best. That content can just be simple shit where they're having collaborations with friends of theirs on things like Among Us, and they will start commanding an audience. Yeah. And it's so long as they create the content and engage, a VTuber will find some sort of success. And as they grow, as they learn where their niche is, they can grow to some very, very big audiences. But I personally, before coming on the show tonight, was hanging out with two small indie VTuber friends of my own. People I made friends with on a Discord competition for another YouTuber. Uh... But the biggest example I can think of, of how much the audience means to any VTuber. April 4th, Calliope Mori's birthday. Mm -hmm. Her entire birthday stream. She talked about an EP she is releasing, or has already released at this point. Um... Exampled some, you know, it made some, did some karaoke of the songs, talked to people, had people call in and talk to her who are friends from all over. Uh... But she has always talked, as we said, in, in, in a character. She talks about her time as a previous Shinigami in training and things of all that nature. That's the character. But what, you're not, what, what you hear when you hear that is not, oh, I'm playing a character. You hear, I used to have jobs before this that I didn't like. Or I used to have jobs before this that were hard. You, she may be talking about them as previously being death in training, But there's an emotion there that comes from her real life. Things that she used to do for real. That she's bringing to that character. And on top of that, she... She's one of the few hololivers that people have discovered her previous work. 
and I'm not going to bring up the name. Fuck that. Fuck you. Break the break the fantasy, and we'll break you. We don't yeah. seek out the previous identities of any of these people because that's just fucking stupid. Don't look behind the curtain. No, the, the, even the community, like the community themselves, like not it's not a rule in Hollow Life technically. Even though you know if that got a full exposure, would probably lead to trouble. But the community themselves do not want their identities exposed. They like to feel that these people are they the characters they play. That this is who they are now. Nothing else matters. Yep. And like I said, you uh. You try to hurt any one of my daughters, I'm ripping off your arms and beating you to death. Don't believe I won't find you and do it. No, and I I'm have... not holding him back. <laughs> but the what are you the... what are you talking about? I'm got, um, I'm Brit <laughs> I'm putting that in the ring and I'm selling tickets. Yeah, but the the <laughs> final the final point is during this entire stream, tons of super chats came in, and they always do on on these big celebration streams. We've seen Gouda and Callie get over ten thousand dollars in super chats in a single stream before, but Callie being in a very emotional state because it is the birthday and it is a celebration of how well she's been doing in Hollow Live and of the fact that she achieved a dream. That's that's the final thing. When I said there's no barrier to entry, all she did was reach out to them and and audition. She may have had a portfolio beforehand, but there are people who joined where we don't know if they had a portfolio beforehand and still got in. Mm -hmm. And she freaks out. Every time she gets these huge super chat uh, waves, and she said, and she talked about it on her birthday, how she sometimes is incredulous, can't believe she's here, and feels like an imposter at times. Imposter syndrome runs pretty deep in people who have anxiety issues, and well, so, uh, some mm -hmm. people do have anxiety issues. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, the entire audience. She values each and every one of them, even if she can't in indiv individually value people. Even if she can't yeah. pick out and say, yes, I value you. The fact that there are people there watching her, the fact that they give their time, their money, their attention to her is absolutely stunning for her. It affects her extremely emotionally to the point that she's so happy she can't speak sometimes and this is a person with over a million subscribers with commonly over 20,000 people a stream who to anyone else she looks like she's a star to herself she doesn't know how she got there and that is the authenticity we are talking about these people, yes. these girls, these these guys, all of these people, indie, uh, incorporated, it doesn't matter. They are in a place they never thought they could get to. Whether they have a small subscribe count, a large subscribe count, a small group of people who always watch them, a large set of people who always watch them, it doesn't matter. These people... Frankly, half of them don't even deserve, they don't even think they deserve what they got. And... Another good uh, good example of this is Coco. Coco signed up to be support staff at Hollow Live. Support staff. And now, and then they were like, that "Now, yeah." And then they were like, "Wait a minute, no, you'd probably be better as an idol." She's like, "Wait, what?" And <laughs> well, now we have this bilingual swearing dragon girl. <laughs> but if I may, I'd like to flip that and show how easy it is to break that authenticity. Because you, you mean the fact that there's an entire song about that that Callie made? Oh yeah, there's that too. But I'm referring to the fur. We're going back OG style here. Let's oh, go God. back to Keys and I for a minute. Okay. Because yeah, we got to bring this up. So, in an effort to expand their content, the people behind Keys and I just started the multiple the multiple I project. The idea was that to lighten the load on the original and to give them and yet continue to produce more content, they created multiple versions of Keys and I. Some that were do gaming streams, some that could sing, some that could do this and that. Unfortunately, it was very mishandled and it backfired hard. Because and the biggest problem was 
is at first a lot of fans felt, and I want to stress felt because this wasn't really what happened, but it felt like the original Keys and I was going away. Yeah, they felt that they were trying to phase her out. They were trying to phase her out. And that pissed everybody off who was following her because there is that authenticity. Up until that point, he's an I was a solo talent and she was her own thing. But now they have made it they made it even 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 if she wasn't going away, it made fans feel that she was no longer her own character, that she was a brand, that she was just another corporate idol. That and she that, was trying to go the way of being manufactured. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that broke the illusion. Now, she's since kind of bounced back. They they've kept they've kept the original act the original voice is still part of the company. In fact, she she's been revealed. She's actually revealed herself because she's gonna also be working behind the scenes to help kind of foster a new talent. But She's still doing the voice. She's still keys in an eye. The main keys in an eye is still her. And I still won't talk about her revealed self at all because keys in an nope. eye is keys in an eye. I noticed I didn't say your name either. <laughs> that being said, that being said, that is where where that authenticity comes in because no matter what you do, if you when, you know no one can, that the, the 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 feeling of uh, VTubers in general is that they are irreplaceable. Yes. Because they are a virtual avatar, you could easily swap someone in, but fans will notice if you do that, and they will call it out. They feel a connection with the person behind that avatar. Even if they don't know what they look like, even if they don't know how they really are, at that very moment, they have a personal connection that if you try to break that, will blow up in your fucking face. Yeah. Which is why um, Hololive has been very smart, and so have many of the other big groups. In any time they want new talent, it's just a new generation. It's just a new branch. Mm-hmm. They, yeah. they, they're like, no, we aren't replacing anybody. Why would we do that? That's dumb. Yeah. Of if, course, if, an, if, if Yago has, has, to... has had his dream <laughs> broken, but, you know, Yago, sometimes dreams have to evolve. I'm sorry. Yeah. Now there have been instances where v- for VTubers have been retired or graduated, as the term goes, for different reasons. And but they don't replace the the voice behind the doubt. They just if that character is no longer being voiced by that char- by that person, that character no longer exists. Uh, probably one of the more better examples to bring up was in Hollow Life's fifth generation with Mono Alo. Yeah, all the way Mono. There- yeah, she accidentally her uh, test foot her test her test footage got leaked her identity got revealed and all hell broke loose it was a disaster and she was harassed so hard that she was forced to retire right as gen 5 was coming out like this was like right at the start yeah right uh the 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 exact um sequence of events were she was testing to see how the rigging would work and everything and that accidentally got pushed out to Twitter, which resulted into a sanction, which put her on two weeks suspension. And at the end of her suspension, um, she what, it was about two weeks before debut, and she was trying to interact on Twitter. But she was receiving a lot of harassment from one person who found out her real identity and was basically a, a stalker. And causing her issues because she had at one point in her life had a boyfriend that she was no longer with. Um, which, regardless of whether they have a boyfriend or not, or a girlfriend or not, or, or the, whether they've been with people or not, unlike something like AKB48, none of you fucks out there have a right to entitled to think they need to be single. I'm going to tell you that yeah. right now. I'll kick you in the dick until you're dead. Uh... But because of this guy constantly harassing her, she had to do things like change her address and phone number. And it wasn't that she was forced to retire by Hololive due to controversy. It was that Hololive approached her and said, we don't know if we can keep you safe. And the safest way to keep you from staying in the limelight is to retire you. And she agreed. 
Yeah. And so they all agreed that she was going to retire her character literally the day before she would have debuted, I believe. Yeah. She had very little footage of her actually. Like, there's very little footage of her out there even now. Like, that's mm-hmm. how little that she was able to do, mm-hmm. which sucks because it looked like she would have been an amazing talent. She would have been an amazing member of Hollow Eyes fifth generation. She would have been fantastic. And uh, yeah. the, the, the massive agreement amongst all of us, the people who have been in this rabbit hole for two, three years now, um, was that whoever this harasser was, um, if the police in Japan didn't find him and we did first, he was going to find the bottom of Tokyo Bay. <laughs> the general consensus was we're going to go old school Yakuza. Here's some concrete boots. Meet your maker, motherfucker. Yeah. That, that's the other thing is that the, the, the VTuber community, the fan base, they can be very rabid. And that can be for good and for ill. The best example is what happened involving the aforementioned Hachima and Kiyokoko when the Chinese community got involved. So, oh my god. Uh, this was back before she fully devolved into Hachima, the, the eldritch gremlin baby. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Akai Hato and Kiyokoko were looking at their YouTube metrics. They were just looking at their YouTube metrics. They didn't even point out the fact that there was a Taiwanese flag, it was just there in the in the examples of the demographics who watch their channel. Mm-hmm. And this pissed the fuck off of China. Now, this is just after uh, the, uh, Hollow Live had started plans to, I believe, open the second Chinese generation. Yeah, the, yeah. I think they were just coming out with China's second generation when this yep. happened. Yep, yep. And Coco and Hato were given... Uh, suspensions. They were told that they were going to be suspended from activities uh, because they violated something or other, which they didn't actually violate. This backfired on Hollow Live and Cover Corp because um, Coco's dad is a member of the Japanese Diet. And for anyone who doesn't know what the Japanese Diet is, think of it as Parliament or Congress or any other uh, large legislative body. Not only was he a member of the Diet, he was a member of the for lack of a better term, anti-China commission they have. <laughs> it's something like, I, I forget the exact name, but it's it's something roundabout that means, yeah, we're making sure China doesn't subvert our, our government. Um, not only that, I believe uh, either Hato's father or someone uh, who was a friend with Hato's father uh, was a journalist trying to look into this and see why was this happening, CoverCore? Why did you sanction these two streamers who didn't actually do anything wrong um covercore got the message covercore got the message real quick they unsuspended both of them like within seven days and uh and fully retired half of the chinese um the chinese girls who were talking bad about hato and coco because uh they showed taiwan on there oh no uh, they didn't they, not half all of them they're no, all they retired. They're all retired now, but before that, only half of them got retired. And then they and then the Japanese diet continued its investigation and said, "So you can do uh you you can do business with China, but remember where your loyalties lie." Yeah. And uh it was a and and to this day, here fucking this Billy is Billy. Where I bring up the fucking fan Billy base. Billy. Yeah. Here's where I talk about the rapid fan base because those Chinese fans still have not forgiven Coco for this. They still blame her for everything that's happened. Like most of them have kind of let go of Hachima, but Coco to this day has to be careful about even turning on turning off membership only chat because as soon as she does, the Chinese fans will flood her chat with And in spam. February she Co- broke down because of it. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. so angry. Kanata, she lives with Kanata now. Kanata and Coco live together. And Kanata was just like announced on like Twitter or on on a on I think it was actually a YouTube community post saying Coco loves to stream for you all, but it's always a risk and sometimes this stuff happens. And literally the the rest of the everybody but China, 
the rest of the community, those of us who are actual living human beings and not communist puppets, <clears throat> we're like, oh, Coco, we love you. Don't worry. You know, we, we know the deal. We know what's real. And the Chinese people tried to start shit. And oh, my God, I have never seen uh, Russian, Indonesian, Japanese, English, German, French, and oh, what was the last one? I'm pretty sure it was actually Hindi. All in the comments, and anytime you took it over to DeepL or to Google Translate, it was basically "shut the fuck up, Chinese puppet." Yeah, <laughs> what? There's, and, there's a level of loyalty there you don't fuck with. And given that, given that you, it brought together people from that from that many different regions to to basically tell to basically tell off, to basically tell them off. I I find that kind of inspiring. I'm telling yeah. you, world, world peace is in the hands of VTubers. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> you, oh. you know, we, 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 to, get, to give you an idea of how, like, it was done as a joke, and some of you guys may not be fans of his, but Jeff Thu, Mother's Basement, did a video about VTubers. Yep. And his opening monologue, I think, was a lot more accurate than I think even he gives himself credit for for that. Yes, his opening monologue on his VTuber episode about how world peace is basically is basically in the hands of VTubers. Yeah, no, he <laughs> as much as I may Nail rag on, uh, yeah, as much as may, I may rag on Jeff Thu for his fucking uh f uh face heel turn into a wokeism um cuz you know, 4 years ago he was as much a shitlord as as you me or, or monk here. Uh <laughs> he uh he he, hit the, he did hit the nail on the head that time. And it wasn't just like, oh yeah, 99.9% .9 accurate. That is, no, laser bolt from fucking the moon, 100% accurate. <laughs> that nail is driven to the core of Earth. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It is it is so it is so driven that I could that I could lip that much like I did when we were watching the Fully Cooly sequels. I could I could do. I could do the gag of your base is under attack. <laughs> <laughs> but but now, all right. Go, go I, ahead, Mike. When it some some now um when it comes to when it comes to this level of loyalty, I have I have seen I have seen some people try and try and pull a rather un, a rather unfortunate um straw man, and in some in some cases, I think they're actually just projecting. Of pe of people um of people of people go of people um try trying to trying to trying to um have that that the people who have this level of loyalty when it comes to VTubers are on the same level as the people who are fanatical when it comes to idols and per and I think it's ma I think it's been made very clear that the two the two while. And while there, I'm not denying that there may be that there may be bad actors because there's bad actors in, in any app in any bunch of apples, but mm -hmm. and this this is the key this is the key thing here that's that se that separates a that separates a toxic group from a less toxic group in is the set is being able to self police. Because no, we 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 all <laughs> even um. As an example, even with the indie VTubers that I hang out with um, on on Twitch primarily, um, their groups are much smaller. Like this is not this probably less than two hundred people uh, overall. Any bad apple comes into that group, me and everybody else, it's always you get out. You're not welcome here. This also, is this is this is granular. It's from the smallest to the largest. Yeah. Also. As far as far as as far as the whole thing with the with the ch with the Chinese abuse, I um I can't help I can't help but find it amusing because what is the one what is the one genre in RPGs that I that I have repeatedly gotten shit on for my bet for my bad pronunciation? Wuxia. It's always fucking Wuxia. I don't I don't get I don't get Swedes getting mad at me for how I pronounce Mork Borg. I don't get I don't. I don't get the Belgians <laughs> pissed at me. I don't get Belgians pissed at me for how I pronounce the names of the folks at Dream Realm Storytellers. I don't. I don't get. I don't get any Scandinavians get mad at me whenever whenever I bring up Trude. Whenever I pronounce um, terms in Trudevang Chronicles or, or the like, and I certainly and I certainly don't get any Brits mad at me whenever I talk about Perilous Land or so, or something like that. No, it's always fucking Wusha. 
that's always the one get, that's always the one entry that always gets somebody getting on me about my pronunciation every fucking time. <laughs> Obligatory Yojo Senki uh uh movie reference to uh commies. If none of you understand what I mean, just go watch that movie. I I, I don't want to repeat it here for fear of uh well having Monk's channel taken down. <laughs> But yeah, the th and the other thing about the VTuber community is that when I, you know, when we talk about the words all inclusive, you know, normally we do that in a bad context because of all the wokeness and everything. But here, there really is something for everybody. Like, yeah, obviously not everyone's going to enjoy the cute girls in and of themselves, but there's so many different personalities, so many different attitudes, so many different types of characters. Like, just within Hololive alone, you could literally find one girl that anyone could appreciate. Yep. Or, if you want to go further, add in the Hollow Stars, you literally have something for everybody. I mean, if if, now. if, if, <laughs> if someone like freaking uh, uh, Coco or Pecora is not in your taste, maybe head over there, head of the bar, and take a look at Roberto. Roberto Oga, Fox Demon. Fox Demon rules supreme. Fubuki and Oga, <laughs> fuck y'all. <laughs> yeah. um, and w some something uh, something when it comes when it comes to the when it comes to the whole all inclusive when it comes to the whole all inclusive thing. I've um I may end I may end up making I may end up making amusing about this d down the line. But something that I've noticed is that the most action the most the communities that are actually inclusive. That are that are completely unironically inclusive are the ones that don't say it. No, they don't have to. They just you know they just it's literally just hey, I found this cool thing. Check it out. Yeah, they don't um, care. You know. <laughs> and that's I had I had jokingly I jokingly said a few years ago that a, that apathy that apathy is the is is the most progressive is the most progressive thing you can do. And yeah, I was being I was being my usual level of facetiousness when I said it. But the point that I was trying to make was that by n was that by not calling it by not calling attention to how to how inclusive or lack there in, or lack thereof you your com your community is or tr you do you don't you um you don't run the risk of being of having the appearance of being fake because I. This this ended up coming to mind for me because I saw I saw a bunch of pe of people in t the um, TTRBG solidarity group um, post up post up th post up that their feed is is a safe space for this or that group and I'm like guys you re you really are you really are missing the point nobody nobody cares about how safe you are for ver for various groups they're th they 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 get they give a shit because you they give a shit about the ga about the game in question that you want to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you're and, if you're there to have fun, you will draw other people in, and as long as you are not forcing them out, every then you're already being, being inclusive. You just yeah. de just don't kick anybody out unless they're being an absolute dick. So, in the shortest and most succinct way of saying this, it goes back to the age old proverb of actions speak louder than words. You dumbasses. Yes, <laughs> indeed, indeed, and that's that's what we get. That's that's how the VTuber community is. You know, they the the VTubers just do whatever it is they want to do. They just play the games they want to play. They sing the songs they want to sing. You know, within copyrighted reasons, obviously, mm -hmm. and they just chat about whatever is on their minds. They don't have anything specific that they have to do. And the fans just naturally come to them because they love the personalities. You know, you you come, you watch uh, Mori Kalalapi because she's a fun little tsundere. You know, you would enjoy seeing her get flustered whenever whenever Kiara gets brought up and or whenever she gets all those super chats. You come to uh, Nina Mai Inanes when you want to see some fun drawing streams and a whole bunch of dad jokes. No, she's <laughs> you know? puns. She's puns. She is dad puns. Dad jokes. Dad jokes is 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 Calliope because of the fact that you know she's also dad. 
fair point, fair point. But you come for you come to Ina for puns. You watch Amelia Watson because you just want to see a gamer girl in her purest form, like a true, legit, good gamer girl. With She's the a attitude fucking combat. gremlin who talks constantly about ground pounding your mom. This yes. is a gamer. Yeah, <laughs> she is a true gamer girl. Mm -hmm. You know, you come to these peak girls or guys, depending on you know. If, because their natural charisma and personality draws you in. Not because people demand you watch it. Not because they insist you must watch them. But because they just naturally draw you in. You see the cute designs. You say, hey, that looks pretty cool. What's this about? You click it, and then you see who they are. And you just can't help but want more. That is authenticity in its purest form right there. They don't have to fake it because they already have it. And I sh I should note I should note that if we're t if we're gonna talk if we're gonna talk about if we're gonna talk about dad jokes then I ha I have to br I have to bring up Apui. <laughs> and her dad. <laughs> <laughs> from Niji Sanji, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and uh, and her and her and her dad who is who is who is who is the living embodiment of dad humor. Yes, I love this. I love Hana, and I love Papa Makia so much. Because hey, it, hey, it's, uh, it is as you as you said as you said in your video on the matter. It is the civic duty of every of every parent to embarrass their kids. <laughs> <laughs> and he does it with style, my friend. If you have not seen some of the clips of those two together, go look her up. And just watch the beautiful madness unfold. Just like, remember that the uh, the other side of that is Pekora and Mama Peko, who constantly says Peko after her sentences to make fun of the way Pekora says Peko after her sentences. Oh <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And the the although I I will I will note that little that little mini that little mini avatar that he, that he has um. It keeps from it, it. Every time I see that, I can't un. I can't unsee it as a gremlinized version of Mark Kern. Sorry, sorry Mark. <laughs> I, you know, but here's the thing. Here's another thing about the authenticity. I think that really sells this is that one of the biggest problems with a lot of pop culture industries, including the idol genre, especially in the idol genre, mm -hmm. is the fact that you have to have a certain look to you, a certain physical look to you. You have to be skinny. You have to have a nice body to you. But with VTubers, they don't have to worry about that. They don't have to be ashamed of what they look like in real life because nobody's ever going to see them. Yeah. You're not you don't need to worry about who they what they look like in real life because all you're seeing is the avatar. As long as the avatar is designed well, you've got that part covered. Then all you have to bring to the table is a good personality. Mm -hmm. Which allows people who would normally have never had a chance, like even if you do know who these people are, who these uh, VTubers are in real life, even if you've seen their IRL personas, if you if, if they have a good charisma to them, they don't need to worry about if they're slightly overweight or if they're if they don't have the right face or if their chest size isn't as big as 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 they want it to be. None of that matters. They are just the voice. They are the personality. They are the soul. The body is just the avatar. That takes care of itself. All you got to do is pay a good artist, and you're covered. Yeah. Um. Something. Something else. I. F I feel is. I feel is. I feel is worth noting. And this is going. This is going to count. This is going to count as as my one. But as you all know, there is always a method to my madness. And I. And when it comes to. Because there was there's a couple of things there were a couple of things in Matt in Maddie's realm of expertise that came to mind as we were as we were discussing both the authenticity thing and the the whole commitment to character and the idol thing. The first off is um Ma is Maki Ito, someone who mm. someone who um now Project Rain Project Rainfall yes that Project Rainfall did a, did a mini doc on the, on her uh, t on her time as an idol and her transition over to um, Joshi, and while she while she cert well she certainly has a long way to go as a as a Joshi. She's she's managed to get a lot of people on her side. For one, 
um, because because they've seen that particular journey, and two, the fact that she, the fact that she, the fact that she has a idol appearance that acts like a fucking Yankee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw, I, I don't know if I saw the Project Rainfall documentary, but I saw a documentary about her, and yeah, that definitely fits the bill. Um, and it's, for those for those unenlightened, Yankee is Yankee in this case is a sh- is a shorthand for delinquent. Yeah. Um, the uh, the other th- the other thing is sir, is I ended up thinking of certain v- certain very popular and very memeable um per- um personalities within the within the um within the independent wrestling scene. Two two names in particular that come that come to mind are um the one the wonderful house the wonderful house and evil house in Danhausen. <laughs> <laughs> And the man who rules ass Warhorse, who I am still, I am, st- if by some miracle I can get, I can get him to G- to GM, um, Gods of Metal Ragnarok when that comes around, I I would pay, I would pay top fucking dollar for that to happen. <laughs> well, if you had invested in in Dogecoin last week, you could you could have had the money for it now. <laughs> yeah, but Hunter's Entertainment hasn't responded to my emails, so I don't uh, even know if that's even gonna. I don't even know if it, it even happened. And the book's not out yet. That's um, true. That's true. It does. If it does come out, I'll, pro- I'll probably I'll probably message him saying I saying I got an extra cop. I got an extra copy of this. You want one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not I prob- I probably had. I'm, I'm not asking for this to be signed. I just I just want this to be on your shelf <laughs> because. It's a game all. It's a game all about being as metal as fuck for, and I'd hand that to the most metal wrestler on the planet. Like it's a match made in heaven, seriously. But <laughs> with those, with those, with those kind of people, they've they built a they built a following by a commitment to that particular character. And you look at the you look at and continuing on this analogy, you look when I look at the idol scene. As much as I hate to make the comparison, I'm gonna have to bring up the Fed shades. <laughs> Mm. Because how how many times how many times have we heard have we heard stories about somebody not having the right look? Yep, that's kind of the point I was getting at. You know, with the idol scene, but yeah, the Fed did the same things. Like if you don't have a certain look to you, you're never going to be the top star. You're never going to be the mo- the the one they push. But with VTubers, they don't have that problem. Mm-hmm. They don't even have to push. Like legitimately, yeah. that's that's the biggest thing. There's no push coming from Hololive other than Hololive saying, "Yeah, we manage these people." Hololive yeah. literally does not run like any advertisement beyond the initial debut stuff. Then, then all of the advertising, all of the the uh, all of the town crier stuff, essentially comes from the girls and the guys themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at most you might see stuff from some of the managers. Like the fact that they have a manager who's practically become a VTuber herself and Achan should say something. The fact that they all have managers that they're fucking friends with. Callie's manager called in on her birthday and tried speaking English with Callie because she's trying to learn English to become friends with Callie. She literally said that on her birthday. She wanted to learn more English to learn more about Callie and talk to Callie more. And that made yeah. Callie cry yet again because Some- Cal- Callie got really emotional on her birthday. Something, something else that I, something else that I think is, I think is worth noting that we ha- that we haven't discussed is the is the push for is the push for a lot of VTubers to to in some form um, learn English. Um, so, so and, the 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 push to learn English is mostly self inspired. Um, it, most, it mostly is, and the reason wh- the reason why I want I wanted to bring this kind of thing up is there's a there's a couple um, there's a couple indie U- YouTube there's a couple of indie VTubers who follow me, and they're very they are very small time, um, and they some at, and both of, both of them have done se- have done several have done several live streams of them trying to le- trying to learn English specifically to specifically to try and bring um their their Japanese and American audiences together. Yeah. And and it's it's um it's a recreation of of what uh people like Kodone has done while trying to learn English or 
uh, Akai Hato had done because she already knew English, or what Coco has done because she's got the most fluent English amongst all the Hololivers. Um, God, her English is super unaccented. Uh, but the it, it's actually her Japanese that sounds more accented at this point. Um, you the these smaller indie uh, tubers that you probably have talked to at least a little bit. Um, it's a good it's a good effort, especially if not only they want to link their audiences together, but they genuinely want to reach out to their their Western audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, and that's that's always a good thing to see. We, I'm going to be perfectly honest from my point of view, and I can't say I'm speaking for all VTuber fans, but I, I'm pretty sure I can say I'm speaking for a majority of the Western VTuber fans. We don't expect you to learn English. No. Um, <laughs> I know multiple VTuber fans trying to learn Japanese to understand the streams as they happen instead of waiting for the translators to translate the best clips. Yeah, um, though and- the translators have definitely really helped bridge that gap. And cr- uh, the, you, we, I definitely would say they helped really show us the, the true authenticity of these, gr- of these girls, allowing us to see the, see them speak in their natural tongue and see the natural you know personality of them come out. And, you know, we've talked about girls, uh, some of these uh, VTubers wanting to work with their English audiences. I think the best example of that is actually Aki Rosenthal. Because her, in Japan, she was struggling. When she was strictly just focusing on the Japanese audience, she struggled to get it noticed. She was mm-hmm. not very popular. But then the Reddit community found out about her, started doing, uh, started making memes and fan art of her, started getting involved with her. And she immediately caught on and lean into it. And because of that, she was able to quickly make up steam. And I think that that's where this whole connecting with her English audiences is. I think that's, she was like the, the one that really probably got that ball rolling because that's when I think everyone else started realizing, oh, wow, the singlest audience, you know, these, these guys are very, these guys really like her. We need to get in on this. You yeah. know, these Aki. Aki is definitely a good one. Um, I, I definitely agree that she probably popularized it. Uh, I would still say that when it comes to amount of effort put in, it's going to be Korone. Oh, yeah. No, uh, I won't argue that for a minute. K- Korone, uh, at this point, her English is good enough to... Uh, To actually, um, to talk with with Hololive EN members without too much pr- uh, trouble, and when she called in for Callie's birthday, uh, Callie's Japanese has also vastly improved. Living in Japan will do that to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they were able to talk back and forth, both in English and in Japanese, pretty well. Uh, as someone who is mostly self-taught in Japanese and probably not very well um even watching the streams can be a little hard for me from time to time but i get the general gist of things which is enough for me to more than enjoy it and watching these two go back and forth in both languages was I, my heart my heart my heart exploded about seven or eight times in the span of a minute um which isn't uncommon remember everybody uh Korone is made of pure sugar you will die of diabetes and if you ever watch her new single, uh, it's literally every meme she's ever had on her streams ever, all the things that she's interacted with her uh, her her watchers ever, all the memes, everything con- condensed into one. So you will you will experience sugar death. You will die. Yeah. But don't worry, Callie will be there to collect the soul. <laughs> but what if but what if they're a ginger? <laughs> Callie will be there to collect them to death anyway because she leaves no deadbeat behind. Fuck you. No. <laughs> now, on the flip side of all of this, the thing about being uh, the authenticity of YouTubers is, is this is not something you can just jump into if you're already established. And I, and I say this knowing that I'm probably going to be making, making myself look like a massive hypocrite because I jumped in on the VTuber thing even though I've kind of already established myself as a real person. But... Someone like me, nobody, not many people know who the fuck I am. I can get away with it, barely. 
But when you're someone who's already well established, you can't flip that. You can't just become a VTuber and expect it to work. And I think you guys already know which name I'm about to bring up who tried this shit. Um, you're, to you're talking about Pokimane, aren't you? Yeah. You damn right I am! You're talking about someone who looked like she was just jumping onto a trend to get more views. Yeah. You don't become a VTuber to become a trend chaser. And again, I know I sound like a massive hypocrite when saying that because that's basically what I did, but I'm fully... I, a, I'm admitting it, and B... I, I don't do this. I didn't do this because it was a trendy thing. I did it because I felt it was a natural progression of what I am as an anime guy. So I felt it was the right thing to do. For it, someone it like Pokemon, probably... on the other hand, yeah. pure clout chasing. Oh. And if and before anybody brings up PewDiePie, he did it for like two episodes as a joke, and you could tell it was a joke. Fuck off. Your points about PewDiePie always fall flat. You're all a bunch of haters. Eat shit and die. Um. Yeah. Plus when when. Using using pu using pu using PewDiePie as as your as your counter is though is the worst card that you can pull because of, because of the fact that um, pu PewDiePie really doesn't get really doesn't care. Um, <laughs> he stopped giving a shit years ago. He stopped yeah. giving a shit when he realized that for, that, that uh, people were going to paint him in the worst possible light for gamer words that don't really mean that over in fucking Sweden. Mm -hmm. <sighs> um. And the and there's 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 also the there's also the fact that um that he's it's it's a case of pure it's a case of pure shit lord and I and I will and I will admit that it that it went even more full circle when 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 there when there was that back and forth with um, Meriwether. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. No. No. Tr trust me. I am subbed to Pewds, and I'm not afraid to admit that. Fuck y'all. Bring it to Zadari Enterprises. We'll sh we'll shovel you six feet under. Yeah. Uh, Pewds. Pewds. You may not like his content. You may not even like his personality. I stay subbed to Pewds because, much like VTubers, the man is genuine. He's authentic. Yeah. I I didn't I didn't like him er early on when it when he w when he was doing the br when he was doing the bros thing and 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 it got ri and that got really obnoxious. And um, he didn't like himself back then either. He's even said as much. But what but once he once he st once he stopped get once he stopped giving a fuck and actually pre actually presented his actual self, that's when that's when I warmed up to him. Um and and I real I realize that I realize that's par that's par for the course at, at this at this particular point, but what I think enough I will I will admit that when when it comes to when it comes to the whole when it comes to the whole uh, tr when it comes to the whole trend chasing thing, if somebody's if somebody's already already es already established, um, so long so long at, I th I think I think somebody could. Do it so so long as they as they present a genuine effort to do so, because I I look at um say a de a dear friend of mine Rabbit Sensei, a awesome guy, who in the la in the last year in the last year or so had tr had um, migrated over to over to doing um V tubing, and actually actually has a um, pretty good avatar in the process. Though I may I may just be partial to ha to having to having a suit and tie, you know, because yeah. I gotta I gotta work my gimmick, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um. And the and it was it the thing I don't I think the reason that he that he was able to pull he was able to pull off that transition in the same way that Martyr was able to pull off the transition over to do or to doing VTubing is. That same le that same level of of eff of effort and and authenticity. Whereas with with somebody with somebody like because um, with when it, when they made that when they made that change, they they went all in as far as far as a full on as far as a full on avatar appearance. Whereas when Pokemon did it, all that it looked like was just a animified version of her of her normal appearance. And yeah. I think the the big thing there is that uh, not only with the, the avatar change and you know the rigging and everything else, 
you you could ostensibly do a, just an anime version of yourself if you if you set it up correctly. But again, it'd have to be authentic and genuine. Whereas Pokemon just kind of did it. She just yeah. kind of showed up. See, when I to, to give my to kind of use myself as an example here, and when I announced that I was going to become a VTuber, I did a whole video setup. You know, because I'd already established in the lore of like my little mini verse that I had this AI computer system that handles my show, and I had all this like the, the, that I work in a pocket dimension kind of thing. So I kind of already had an established lore around me to begin with. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy for me to just say, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna I'm going to animate myself now because I'm an anime guy. That's who I am. It's what I do. So let's take it to the next level." And I even did the whole henshin thing because that's what I've done. That, that video was I great, had, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, st I s established, I'd already had an established lore to tie into the creation of my avatar. And, you know, even with updates, I was able to keep that lore going, making tweaks and changes and showing that, yes, I'm updating the system kind of thing. You know, I create a, a lore and use that lore to set this up. Whereas, like you said, with Pokimane, she just popped up one day and was like, "Oh, hi, I'm the VTuber now." Wait, what? Does that what? make Does that make Steve Bloom the first VTuber as Tom Two O? <laughs> well, then, then technically, you'd have to say Sunny Straight is for being Tom One Point Oh. Oh no, 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 no! Then we'd have to go back even further and say it's the reboot cast. <laughs> yeah. You're, See, um, this is how deep this rabbit hole goes, folks. <laughs> um, let, let me let me um re, let me re, let me um go, let me go one step further. The patient zero is Microsoft Sam. Oh God! Being the chief, <laughs> what? You are what? Are you not familiar with Microsoft Sam? I figured you I did figured you, you no? Would. Did you did you not just hear what I said? No. Arby and the chief, what? <laughs> okay, first first off, fuck you for making me remember that. It's gone now. Um they deleted literally everything Machina Machinima had ever made when they bought it. Yeah. Sad day. <laughs> Cuz there was still some good stuff like Arby and the Chief. Mm -hmm. But the thing but the th I would I've never gone. I've never gone all, all in with it, but I had fl I had flirted a couple times with tr with trying out with trying out v v tubing bef and um I could I could probably if I put if I if I was consistent enough and I did and I didn't have um technical issues plaguing me all the damn time I could probably pull it off because um I haven't re I ha even though I've done a f even though I've done a few. A few um, th a few camera things. I don't. I haven't shown my face a whole lot when it comes to this sort of thing. And e and even when I even when I do ev even when I do reveal myself, ev everybody keeps saying the first thing, the saying the same damn thing that they say every time some every time somebody sees me for the first time. <laughs> yep, all all well, of the tall jokes. <laughs> yeah, oh, I thought course. I thought you were gonna say it was gonna be the black jokes. Dude, there's only, <laughs> there's only two. There's only two people who've who've done that, and they and they are just as much of a shit as you, Zan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but to be fair, like knowing knowing what I know about how you've set yourself up, Meldra, you could probably get away. You have an established story or lore that you could tap into. Again, you are the monk of a holy temple. Mm -hmm. Pretty much writes itself. <laughs> yes. Even I'm, if even if the even if the temple is just a screen grab of the Tuskang Temple in Tibet, all, all, I actually think all three of us have the, have the potential because there's only one place my uh, real face is, and it's actually not linked to any of my online uh, usernames. Yeah, but <sighs> the point the point the point is 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 that when it, is that when it comes to when it comes to the when it comes to do when it comes to doing this, if and and this and I I kind of wanted to, I kind of wanted to tie into this with the whole um mu with the whole multiling multilingual thing. If the if a effort is shown, then that will be, then that will be reciprocated. Like if yes, it, if yes. it's if it's shown that you were, this is this is also the reason why I brought up um 
Project Melody admitting that, admitting that she's that she's terrible that she's not very good at video games, which may have may have been may have been fifty percent legit and fifty percent self deprecating humor. Um, well, I mean, she is just a a uh, a spam filter that gained AI sentience. You don't think she would have gaming skills? Then, no. ag then again, I re I remember I remember what um. What a what a certain what a certain artist in Spain did when they when the internet got a hold of got a hold of um got a hold of Tay and turn and turned and, <laughs> and turned a, a and turned Microsoft's AI algorithm into a complete shit lord. Ah, uh, cuckoo do yo, <laughs> we love you. Yes. yes. Um. But the th the thing the thing of it is, as long as as long as that effort is being sh is being shown the the there will be there will be a degree a degree of flocking to um to it because do you do you really think that when it comes to this whole um japanese people trying to learn english and english people trying to learn japanese do you really think that, do you really think that would ha that would have happened if you if we didn't have all of these stumbling points of of um cor of say korone trying to trying to go as far as she can u using english and and failing multiple 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 times <laughs> human is Tato. Tato is human. Doggo is Tato. Tato is Doggo. Human <laughs> is Doggo. There you go. There's some Kurone for you. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, it, it's a case of if you're going to do it, commit to the bit. Commit mm -hmm. to going all in on this. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you, know, you, you, ha you have to stay in character at all times. For example... I have not, even though my real face is already out there, I have not once done any streamer video with my real face since I've become a VTuber. I've stuck to it. Mm -hmm. I've committed to this. And that's what goes on with these girls. They commit to not only being an avatar, but ha sticking to their characters, even when they are being emotional and, and re kind of showing their human side. Even when they are... Be, being themselves they still stick to the bit going back to Callie you know during those birthday that birthday celebration she stayed in character even when she was having she was crying her eyes out and just bearing her soul she was still in character still in character but she knows that it's not the character we all love yeah I mean yes it is the character we love but it's not the character take the character away we still love Callie Exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. And that goes for every single one of these VTubers out there that are very po that are as popular as they are. You know, we we've been talking about Hololive, but let's look at the Shoujo girls for a minute. Mm -hmm. Because the Shoujo crew have also been really good at this lately. Zen and you know, Fruit, you, my two favorites. Zen and Fruit are good and of course Iron Mouse, holy shit. <laughs> like when you learn the real history behind Iron Mouse and what she's dealing with, and how becoming a VTuber was really her only way to interact with the world at all. Like, she can be a total shitlord herself, but she is one of the most wholesome shitlords you will ever fucking meet. Mm -hmm. I just, I want to see where the Piwo saga ends. I want Piwo to join V Shoujo as Zen and Fruit's daughter. I, I want this. Zen, goddammit, sign the papers! <laughs> sign the papers, Zen! <laughs> Stop being a negligent, negligent mother. Yeah, the, the only one of the, the shoujo girls that you could honestly make an argument for about authenticity is Hajime Hime. And the only reason I say that is because she outed herself As long snap. before she even debuted. Yeah, yeah Sid Snap. I normally, again, we normally don't bring up their real names, but or their uh, all, their other personas, but Sid Snap. AKA the uh, I believe fiance of Gigook wife over the, they're married or wife they are married I wasn't sure yeah. the wife of Gigook made a video talking about her working on becoming a VTuber and the thumbnail is literally Hajime Hime months before she actually debuted yeah so, so this is an exception I know that I said earlier don't reveal these people but she did actually show the artwork for the, the exact artwork that was used for Hajime Hime's debut on her channel she talked about how she was originally trying to audition for hololive i believe it was and uh and didn't make it um but even then 
When she's playing Hajime Hime, nobody brings up Sid Snap. We we bring no. up Hajime Hime. Yeah, um, you might see a couple comments on Reddit when it comes to that, but like in the chats, no. At that moment, she is Haj she is Hime. That is who she is. That is all that matters. The only that's, the, that's the only person I might bring up for authenticity doubt is uh is Nyaner's. But that's because I know about Nyaner's dark past amongst the internet. And for any of you who don't, go look it up yourself. I'm not going to bring that drama here. It's toxic. It can go away. Yeah. But it, it, even despite that, she has, like, ever since she started working with Vishojo, she has a, clearly grown by leaps and bounds. And I would, I would say matured, but I think that's the only really good closest word I could use. She is, she is clearly coming to her own since that time. She still has a long way to go to re-earn my trust. Oh, I don't. I'm not arguing that. I'm not saying uh, that she's completely won everybody over, but she clearly has changed in how she acts and how she behaves. And over time, I think that will happen. But obviously, yeah, it can't be overnight. But the fact that she just recently got to do a uh, an Among Us stream with, with I freaking Ki with Kizuna I herself. I watched that. That has to count for something. She was, you could hear, you could hear when she was introducing herself to Keys and I how she, she was on the verge of hyperventilating. And while, again, with my doubts into her authenticity continuing to plague me, um, I, I didn't think that that was faked. I didn't think that that was faked. I think that she was legitimately like, holy shit, I'm meeting somebody that I only looked up to beforehand. This never could have happened in my previous life. What the fuck do I do? She even she even introduced herself in some pretty uh pretty good Japanese there. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be honest. So yeah, that that's the kind of thing we're looking at here when it comes to authenticity. Is that yeah, things you know is if you're gonna go for it, you go well in on it. And I think yeah, Nianers has done that, and all of the Shoujo girls definitely deserve all the respect for the shit they've been able to pull. I mean, even Zentrea, Zen, who doesn't <laughs> even have an actual voice. No, she has a voice. But Fuck you. That is her voice, and it's beautiful. <laughs> it doesn't matter that it's a text-to-speech program. It's yes. beautiful. Yeah, for those who don't know, Zentrea does not actually, like, talk talk. She uses strictly a... It's kind of this weird... She talks, and then it goes through a text-to-speech filter. Yeah, um, I think sh I think Quiet Shy has something similar. And Quiet Shy is not a, not a VTuber, but she is, she is the... She is a rather infamous um, tr um, troublemaker within the Warframe community. <laughs> Zentra is quite the opposite, for uh, to be honest. She, she tries to be the, the, the reasonable one of the group, and I stress tries to be, because her chat won't let her have it. <laughs> yep. and the Her the, chat uh, trolls her hard. Oh, yeah. No, we troll the shit out of Zen. Um <laughs> Just as a side note, the text-to-speech voice that she uses is the Tatiana Ivona voice. Yeah. So for any she of you, she used to use a very. It, it was funny. She started out just you just typing text on uh, on a speech bubble, and then she went to a generic text-to-speech voice for a little while. But then, yeah, she adopted this new one, which I think works out really good for her. The the other uh, my my other favorite V Shoujo talent, um, besides you know, Zen and and. Zen and Fruit, um, Silver Veil. I love Silver Veil. She's uh, just so nice. She she is the girl next door of the group. Absolutely. I mean, she's still got her pervy side to her. Don't get me wrong. I mean, all of the shoujo girls have a level of horniness that almost makes Marine look tame. <laughs> I mean, well, considering that Melody is part of V Shoujo, anyone should be able to gauge it from that. Yeah, um, pretty much. But, but no, Silver Silver Veil is the most wholesome. Absolutely. 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 And she was actually the second subject I covered on my show. And yeah, she she is very much the girl next door type. I, I, the, the fact that, you know, she's got that little lisp in her voice, like it's very subtle, mm -hmm. but it just fe it makes it feel more natural that way. And she just feels more wholesome because of it. Like it, it works in her favor instead of it being a detriment. Her most famous, her, one of her most famous quotes. <clears throat> I love cream pies. They're just so gooey and delicious and moist. Yum. The food. The food chat, the I food. swear. <laughs> yeah, I used that clip in my video, dude. I yeah. so used that clip. I had to. So, you, you, no, no, Silver Veil. We knew what you actually meant.
You meant don't both. bullshit us. We, don't bullshit we know us at all. Exactly what you meant. You meant D both. The only person who the only person who can get away with that kind of bait and switch is D Bride. <laughs> <laughs> she literally did that in a comic. Yes. <sighs> but the and that and that's because and that's because that was part that's part of the whole joke of 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 um of half half of the half of it half of D Bry's interpretation of of Resident Evil's cast loves innuendos and the other half just doesn't get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I also love the fact that with uh with the shoujo uh Vebe only technically is recently considered part of V Shoujo, but she's been collabing with them for so long people already um like Informally considered her a part of Vishojo. I, I honestly, when I saw the announcement that Vebe was joining Vishojo, I was like, "Really? Took you this long? Geez, I figured she would have been part of the main crew to begin with. What the fuck?" Mm -hmm. But speaking speaking of the, of all of all these groups with with so many different so many different groups and so many and so many different indie um, individuals. Um. That was why I th that was why I thought it was only a matter of time before Holodex would come into being, because I do remember I shared I shared that I shared that little thing with you. Mm. Uh huh. Um. And this was this was something that was cr this was a website that was created by fans as a means to track mul multiple um str multiple streams at once, as well as keep track of upcoming streams from them. Um. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, and then one for just general information. The one that I, I pr tend to use is the virtual YouTuber wiki, virtualyoutuber.fandom.com. Mm -hmm. Yep, um, that's what I've got up right now, actually. Yep, it's a great place. Not only does it have all of the big groups, it has a ton of the indies. It uh, has uh, many of the different... It um, has them sometimes by language. You got Japanese, Chinese, Russian, German, other languages. Um, for example, who I mentioned earlier, Anindo Piwo. She's she's Russian. She's a Russian uh, dragon whose horns look like fruits, and who the rest of her kind, she's got the red hair from from Zen, which is why everybody makes the joke that Zen is Mama. And then she started watching Zen's streams on her streams and going, Zen is mama. And then Zen started noticing that she was watching her it became It became Streamception at one point where Zen was watching Pio's, Pio's stream as Piwo was watching Fruit's stream. And Fruit was responding to Piwo in her chat. Because Piwo sent her like some bits or a sub or something. And uh, Fruit was like, yes, I'm Fruit Papa now. I am your dad. <laughs> Even and even just made a very quick ske sketch of number one dad mug and put it on her, on her on her on her uh, her stream. I'm like I'm like God damn it, Zen, you're screwed now. You're gonna get them child support payments. And then the whole chat, the whole chat was like, Zen's not looking forward to them child support checks. <laughs> like not, I'm not even get. Oh. <laughs> Okay, who did this? I, Wait, what? What? Who, on the on the on the YouTuber page on the virtual YouTuber page for Piwo, it has a link that says Zentreya is her mother. Links to a YouTube video to the Russian VTubers translated page to one of the Piwo Chan and her mommy Zentreya. Zentreya did not officially adopt Piwo ever. She's always said each, each time it's brought up, I never signed any papers. So whoever's doing this on the virtual YouTuber fandom has to be a Zentreya fan because they're only doing this to troll Zen. Absolutely. Anytime Zen comes on here, she's going to be trolled by this. Meme magic. I'm, tell I'm love, telling you. Meme magic I love is real. I love memes. I love this this whole thing. Mm -hmm. But I w now as far now um obviously I have I as in a lot of things I end up thinking long term about the, about this sort of thing is and whether or not there's going to be some some massive um some massive burnout um 
like how like how there's been how there's been with cer with certain th with certain things that came and went within internet culture. Um, in this particular in this particular case, in order for that to really happen, you would have to need you would have to have a specific set of events happen at a specific um su um succession in order for in order for it to happen. Basically, you'd have to have a a um series of a series of perfect events like how we had like the kind of events that led up to the video game crash of the eighties, um, which incidentally is why why I say, why I say that anybody who anybody who thinks that we're in the midst of a se of a second gaming crash is talking out of their ass. Um, yeah, I think at most we might see a reduction, we might see a crunch, because there is I, I would say even now there's already beginning to be an oversaturation. Like there are so many VTubers out there. Yeah. That it's impossible to keep up with them all, so I can already see that aspect, but I don't see it getting anything worse than that. I would just say a small reduction, but it's never going to truly go away. No, it's here's it's here's the way the way I see it: the people who are established now, whether they're big or small, will remain. They're going to remain as as a core group. Even again, the referring to my VTuber friends I was with earlier today, even though they have pretty small uh, groups of subscribers, groups of followers. They're, they're continuing on with it, despite the fact that the, ret the return on investment is so small. Mm -hmm. um, unlike the gaming crash, uh, the, a lot of the, especially the indie VTubers, are a product of passion. This is something that they want to do, that they're striving to do, that they've dreamt of doing. And even though they may need to, at times, reduce streaming hours because they have to get a real job outside of VTubing, or they have health problems that they have to reduce uh, streaming time for, anything of this nature, outside, when it comes to the indie VTubers, they're actually more likely to try and persevere, um, simply because they, they know it's them and only them. Um, whereas the people with the groups, especially the larger groups, they have a little bit more of a, of a golden parachute. They have a little bit more of a safety cushion. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't see Hololive or Niji Sanji or any of the big name reducing any of their generations that are already debuted. Uh, any generations that have been announced and haven't debuted, they may delay, but they've already begun hiring processes for those. Uh, and they may at some point say, okay, we're not going to be opening any new generations for a while, if there is such a crunch as what Shades was, was intimating at. But it'll, it'll be, to me, at most it'll be a pause. Um, it'll be harder for indie VTubers to establish themselves. The big corp uh, incorporated VTubers will likely stop. Uh, there'll be a hiring stop for a while. But once equilibrium is, is reached, and it will be reached rather quickly, in my estimation, maybe only a year or two of that sort of pause, uh, it'll start moving forward again. And maybe a little sl more slowly, maybe a little more pace. I think what we might end up seeing more is likely there's going to be an evolution. And we're already kind of starting to see signs of that with people like Code Miko. Yeah. Where we're seeing new technologies and new changes to how VTubers are, are being done that I think that's going to be the next wave. Like, the next time we get to see a massive explosion in VTubers, it's going to be a whole new style of VTubers. They may have some of the same things. They may still be doing the live chats and everything like that, but there's going to be something specific about them that's going to be vastly different that's going to blow it up all over again. Yeah. Uh, I think... Uh, I think some of the other things that we're going to see... Um, is it's going th that evolution is still going to leave space for what we have now because yeah. i'm going to tell you right now um while i'm very impressed by the technical aspect of code nico how well rendered and uh and uh how well modeled it is i prefer uh, the live 2D and live 3D models that we've seen on the side of 
Hollow Life, Niji Sanji, and the Indies. And I find that a lot of people prefer that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, and plus, what plus some. You're you're still gonna you're still gonna have you're still gonna have people who don't who don't have the don't have the ability using Howl Alive as the de as the devil to excuse to excuse why they why they haven't made it. Um, now and, we move into the lack of authenticity. And for and and th and those people are always gonna be salty. And that and you know how you know how it is with this kind of thing. That's just going. That's just going to get the fans to go. F oh, fuck you! I'm s fuck you! I'm sticking with. I'm sticking with what I'm going because one, it's fun, and two, I get to spite your bitch ass. <laughs> Mentioned earlier, there was a a song I brought up uh, from Calliope Mori, where she essentially told off these people who say, "Well, I can't make it, and the only reason you could was because of Hollow Live." Um, where she, where it was her repeating advice she had been asked on a QA. and a on, on a Q&A, someone asked her quite innocuously, what if I want to start VTubing? What should I do? Her response, make content. Doesn't, doesn't matter if the content is that good in the beginning. Just make content, engage your audience, do what you like and what, you, and what is going to make you stand out as you. And it wasn't even, like, uh, telling anybody off. This was just anybody who wants to try and do anything, she even expanded it to. You know, do, do the things you love to make yourself stand out in that particular way. And uh, the... Wh uh, what, what, what do we call them? It's a... It's a uh, Hirohei, one of the, the anime and weeb news youtubers out there coined the term v tweeters because <laughs> these are people who say that they're v tubers or are going to be v tubers because they haven't debuted yet um who do nothing but tweet all day they don't make any content they just tweet about things and uh he said he and i said and a bunch of other people said that when she said this these v tweeters exploded in just the most weird, stupid way about how, uh, well, she doesn't know what she's talking about, and she's got Hollow Life behind her, and she'd never be as successful if she was otherwise. And as I've said before, and as as I'll say again, immediately Hall the uh, the VTube fan base, especially Callie's fan base, but even people outside of Callie's fan base. Uh, came back at these people with, with about a million snapbacks. You could hear them across the fucking galaxy saying, sit your fucking ass down, put your head fucking back down. You haven't made shit. And, uh, and you know, there was, there was the, the points that we've already made. Mm -hmm. Callie works hard on the content she made. And yes, as I said, people have discovered her previous, uh, her previous identity, and in that previous identity, she worked just as fucking hard. I can only, I can only ex assume that part of the reason Hollow Life was so happy to have her was because her portfolio showed how dedicated she was to her art. Yeah. Plus, you know, they liked her, and she's genuinely a fun person to interact with. Uh, and. After all this, this started exploding back and forth from these V tweeters who couldn't get their heads out of their asses to save their life, and the rest of us going, "You're stupid. Make something, anything. We'll, we'll, you'll, you'll actually get some sort of modicum of respect if you actually make the fucking effort." And uh, Callie saw this going on, saw it spilling over every so often, and just wrote the best song about how um, she tried to give good advice, tried to be nice about it, but now she's outright saying, start creating, stop tweeting. That was literally a line in the song. And Yep, it's, I can even tell you what song it was, Off With Their Heads. Yep. Off With Your Head. Off With Your Head. Such a good song. Um, yes. And the, the, the big thing about it is, 
Callie wrote that. This isn't another part of the authenticity, unlike traditional idol groups. It's not these songs are not necessarily written for these girls. Callie wrote all of her own songs. And the singles that a lot of the girls have, such as Say Fanfare for Fubuki or Corone's most recent Psycho Tensai Wonderful World. By the way, the kanji and Tensai mean disaster and not genius. <laughs> so it's it's uh, the Great Disaster Wonderful World of Corone. That's the name of the song. Uh, these these songs are written by the people singing them. Yes, the music might be composed by someone else. Again, in Callie's case, that's usually not true. She usually designs most of her melodies, asks for some help with the mixes. Um, Callie's very musically inclined. But with these singles that they that they sing, uh, Marines Ahoy, uh, you know, Big Red Heart from from Akai Harto, ev every one of them. They come up with the, the lyrics themselves as something that they want to genuinely express. And maybe they don't always design the melody. Maybe they, maybe they get some help with that, or maybe or they get help with mixing or presentation. But the authenticity is still there because they're trying to reach out through a song they want to do, the, to do that expresses them and wholly them. And, yeah. and so... When Off With Your Heads came out, and I was there at release just bopping to it. I'm like, yes, yes! Slam! <laughs> yeah, Callie, Callie is my girl. When, when it comes to Hall IVN, I'm, I'm subbed to all five, and I will not be afraid to admit that. Um, hey, same, same. <laughs> I feel like I'm subbed to half of Hall Alive sometimes. You're not as bad as Nags. <laughs> probably true. <laughs> Which is which is why which is why I felt this which is why I felt this was a per this was a a perfect time if any to co to cover this kind of thing. Be yeah, because uh, because of the sh the sheer the sheer variety, um, and when it when and that that's why I think that's why I think that for all for all intents and purposes, even if there is a crunch, which would re would require again again a stack of dominoes falling in falling in the right order. Um, I don't I don't think at even if the worst case scenario were to happen when it comes to Hollow Live, the only thing that would happen was that it would just shift. This per this particular moti this particular motif of this kind of authenticity you're going to you're going to see in one form in one form or another. Um, yeah and. V tubing is just V tubing is just um uh, the is just the means of of how of of how it of how it would took of how it would take place because it if it wasn't V tubing then it would be then it would be some other form with the same amount of emphasis on authenticity because that's that's the key that's the key here that's the that's going to be the coat that's going to be the coda to take away that the the um and what now. Whether or not whether or not it's a whether or not it's a it's a illusion for sad boys or whatever cynical approach you want it, you want to take on that on that front the fact is that there, that perception dictates reality and if there is the perception of authenticity then the rest will follow and I think it, I think a good case in point with is that is the um is the massive mistake that happened with Kiz with Kizuna I. Mm -hmm. You know, br mm -hmm. you br breaking the illusion can have serious consequences. Mm -hmm. But one, go ahead. One final note I'd like to make in all of this: mm -hmm. uh, you guys have seen me over a lot of geek watches. Everybody watching, uh, when it comes to my commentary, unlike the monk, unlike shades, I don't make the the critical insight as part of my my bread and butter part and parcel as they do. I'm the the Joe Blow. I'm average guy on the on the on the uh, on the sidelines, giving my insight as a consumer, and as probably the biggest nerd I know. Sorry, guys, I'm taking that that title for myself. <laughs> Fuck y'all. Um, <laughs> and the appearance of authenticity isn't just 
relegated to VTubing. It, this is something that you see everywhere, in every place that has some sort of interaction between entertainer and the entertained. If you really want to take the limelight on authenticity and shine it as far back as you can in, say, my personal lifetime, Weird Al Yankovic. Authentic about everything he does. Authentic with his with his uh, with his songs, with the with the parodies he tries to do, and with his audiences. The, uh, yeah. Austin St. John from from Jason, the Power Rangers guys. The the appearance of authenticity, whether illusion or not, and in most cases it is not because it's hard to fake something like that. Yeah, is everywhere and the fact that it's so easily accessible with vtubers the fact that these that in many cases in most cases these are normal people who have stepped into a role they probably honestly half of them didn't think they were gonna get they they're the especially with places like hololive and niji sanji there are hundreds of auditions for a single spot hundreds you're being picked out of crowds. And that breeds authenticity in many cases. So, again, whether you're going to be cynical and say, oh, yeah, you're just, you guys are just doing this because you don't have anybody real to, co co to connect to the sad boy, the authenticity illusion for sad boys, as, as Monk mentioned, mm -hmm. or whether you really think the authenticity is there, um, it's not going away. And mm -hmm. that leads me to think again, and this time, not as a joke, not as a meme, world peace is in the hands of this whole thing. People get behind this sort of authentic, this sort of authenticity in the millions. And if you can find a way to direct that, direct it away from all the bad shit that happens in the world towards this type of entertainment and authenticity without trying to manufacture it, you will see the general bad shit in the world start to go away. Yeah, when we say they're in the millions, think about this. I'm, I'm actually double-checking this just to verify, but I think there's only like two of the English, no, one of the English Hololive girls who hasn't crossed a million subs. Is that Ina? Ina. She does tend Ina to be the quietest. The... Yeah. But actually, no, Kiata is also still under a million. That's surprising. That is. No, honestly, no, I, no. Thought she was... I, I know why it is. It's because they killed her. YouTube killed her channel for like that one week. That's true. Her channel's been through hell and back a couple times. But yeah. But, you know, you look at someone like Garg Gargura. 2.5 plus million subs in less than eight months. <laughs> yeah. Um, please remember that up until Gargura uh, debuted, the fastest growing Hololiver was Kodone, followed by Fubuki. They were both on the cusp of hitting a million. Gargura uh, debuts, and then we get uh, Q gas, gas, gas meme, and she hits a million, and then hits two million. Just bam, bam. <laughs> Just completely blew them out of the water. All Wait. with one simple letter. Ah. <laughs> Wait. Ga Wait. Gas. Shades. Um. Baron is still salty. <laughs> Literally seen the bar chart of of subs for the Hollow Live girls done to three different songs at this time, all of them from Initial D. You've got Deja Vu running in the '90s and Gas, Gas, Gas on all of them. Yeah, because that's it was literally like that quick. Because mm. the 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 rise of the v, of the Hollow Live girls was was I would say slow, but it was at a nice steady pace. Things were going good, and there were a couple girls that were starting to take the foot. And then, like you said, Gura yeah. shows up. One word, one letter, not even a word, a letter. Ah, so. <laughs> and and the only reason she did it on stream was to echo her her. Dream test and her twit and her tw uh, her tweet test, where all she yeah. did was post letter A, and then she goes on her debut, and the first thing she does, it with reverb, with ah. reverb, ah. 
and uh, the the entire internet had a collective stroke and heart attack. Mm-hmm. Yes, they did. But then again, she took that and ran with it because she's also got a very, very good personality to boot to go with that. Uh, again, very wholesome personality with her. Small dumb I mean, shark. She... <laughs> Small dumb shark. She hates that she's called dumb, but she get the, she plays into it. She so plays hard. into it. She's called herself a small dumb shark. <laughs> yes. Let's not uh, let's not forget that she's had she's had her fur. He's she, whenever she does crossover, she's had her fair share of um small brain mo- small brain moments. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, she, her singing voice also carried her to add it to that. Oh, because, Jesus! Good God! First time I heard her sing, I was like, God damn, she's giving Callie a run for her money. Yep. Holy shit! But I think, but I think, I think that co- I think that coda when it comes to do- when it comes to doing the work is a f- is a fine capstone, not the pinnacle of yeah. entertainment software, to to <laughs> to, 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 end, to end off because that that'll do it for this particular episode of Geek Watch. Um, next week, next week, uh, next week we pander to the to- we pander to the Toku fans with something that is one going to be a long time coming and two. Going to do going to do something that I love doing, pissing people off. Uh, I'll be the um, bailiff in that courtroom. Yeah, I, I, all I'm gonna say is uh, to my buddy Easy Rider, do not watch next week. You're not gonna like what we have to say. <laughs> I don't give I don't give a fuck if he watch I don't give a fuck if he watches or not. If he do, if he if he does and he, if he does and he gets mad, well, mission accomplished. Because <laughs> what? Because oh oh I I said something that made some that. I said something that made somebody mad. Get to the back of the line. <laughs> <laughs> Pissed off I'm just your friend. Him fair warning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Look, I believe we hold these truths to be self-evident: that all men are cremated equal; <laughs> <laughs> that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are are the are life, liberty, and the pursuit of shit posting, and the right to get fucked. <laughs> But but with that with that said, um, as far as as far as what's coming down the pipe the rest of this week, there will be a there will be a fair few interviews. I do apologize for the lack of um, Valley of the Judge last Friday. Um, two of two of us were two of us were down, and I and I had and I had called it. Um, we will be returning to that this Friday, and we'll be de- we'll be dealing with the sorcerer, and I will have proper notes so we can address the scubness of the sorcerer, um, <laughs> and his and his horse, horserer. Let's not forget that. Um, Monday, NorCal Mythos returns to talk about lockdown because he's he's managed to embrace the weeb, and we didn't even have anything to do with it. I love it when my weeb aura just infects people by me merely existing. <laughs> Um, Tuesday, I've got two days. I've got um, Sam Thrace from um, from the from Visions of Sume- Visions of Zumea. Um, Wednesday, um, Alex Zuberev from War and Ether, which was one of the easiest ones for me to set up because t- same time zone. Um, thir- um, Thursday, um, Curtis Simcox from Gateway. Um, Friday, I've got Friday. I've got a double. I've got a double header. Um, unless so, unless there's some change, um, my my, uh, my one of our favorite Italian brothers, Max, is com- is coming back to d- to do an amazing artifice because, well, we both we both like the game Heretic, so we figured why n- why not try why not try and adapt some of the weapons to that into tabletop. Um, also also it allows us to make the fire mace not a piece of shit. <laughs> um. And then shortly after that, I'll have um, Richard Kemp on to talk about his comic War Priest. And of course, and of course, next Sunday we will have a Toku-themed episode of Geek Watch. That it that um just get get your get your fedoras ready. Make sh- make sure you ha- make sure you have your lo- make sure you have your lawyer's badge on, on your pinned onto your suit. Get get out the gavels and get and get the robes because. There's going to be a trial coming. Objection. I'm going to be there. (laughs) (laughs) But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, 
My name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch.